and hello and welcome to NCEP's fourth day of this Financial Literacy Week that we have started observing from the 14th, that is the last Monday, till tomorrow, that is 18th of February 2022. And uh, most of you will know those who have attended the last three webinars, uh, the last preceding three days. The overall theme is Go Digital and Go Secure. And today we have the webinar on the insurance sector. Yesterday we had the pension, day before we had the banking, and then we had the inaugural webinar. Today we have the another important uh, sector, which is the insurance uh, sector. And today's national webinar is uh, on that. And to address all of us who can be better other than the chief general manager and the director of NCFE herself, she has kindly consented to address uh, the webinar today. Simati Agna Priya Bharat, Madam, we appreciate your joining us, Madam. We know how valuable your time is, and in spite of that, you have agreed to come and address us. She is uh, not only the Chief General Manager of IRDI and heading the non-life uh, sector, she is a postgraduate in sociology and is a fellow of the Insurance Institute of India, and she has more than 35 years of service in this sector. So you can know she has put her eyes and ears onto the ground, and she knows everything about this insurance uh, sector. And under her leadership, only the insurance the awareness campaign has uh, seen an upsurge, and the campaign that IIDI is doing in the uh, all the media are really praiseworthy. Madam, we have participants from a diverse sector, from the school children. Some of the schools are uh, going live on their auditorium. They are connected. And then we have the uh, our resource person, SEBI's resource person, the FLCs, the Financial Literacy Center in charges, then the principals and the school teachers, a very diverse crowd. And the, of course, most important representatives from the insurance industry, that sector. So uh, uh, the topic, uh, for today is uh, let me again it is all uh, before you on the screen but using digital technology for the growth of insurance sector and uh, who could be better than the iidi insurance regulated development authority of india itself and uh, we once again thank you uh, madam for kindly uh, consenting to address us over to you i don't want to take much time over to you agna priya madam Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Just, just for a second, if uh, you are willing, we can take a few questions on the chat box if they are coming. Just a few, not many. The other questions we'll address through our mail and all. Few important questions, if you agree at the end of your session, we can from the chat box, if anything is there, we will pose. Sure, if I miss seeing them while I'm speaking, I would request you to post them to me at the end of the session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will at the end of your session only, we will not. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dvivedi. Good morning, and it's a great pleasure to interact with all of you through the platform of the National Center for Financial Education. And on behalf of NCFE and the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India, I extend a very warm welcome to all of you. I hope all of you have been finding the activities of the Financial Literacy Week useful. Today's topic, as you know, is using technology for the growth of the insurance sector. And uh, while discussing this topic, it is important to set a context to it. The development of any sector depends on the speed, efficiency, and transparency involved in services. So services should be, you know, required by people. People should be happy with that. The end goal is to satisfy the customer. So you want people to come back again and again and find the service that you offer useful. When you look at the insurance sector, it's a huge uh, sector and they've been growing well. In the last financial year, the growth rate was 8%. And the premium volumes are looking at is over 6,22,000 crore. But when you look at the country as a whole, and you look at you know the GDP of the country, there is something called penetration, which we normally talk about in insurance parlance, which basically reflects how well the country is protected, you know, by insurance. So the penetration level in our country is 4.2 percent, and which doesn't compare uh, very well with the world average, which is you know 7.2 percent. And therefore, we know that there is a lot of scope for protection. How you link the growth of insurance sector to better protection levels is the more the sector develops, the more the penetration increases. You know that society and economy is protected better. I just mentioned that a service is good or bad based on whether you know it is efficient, it is speedy, and whether there is transparency. What better methodology to facilitate this than digitalization? 
so like in all other sectors digitalization has uh, you know uh, the insurance sector too has seen a lot of digitalization and it has brought in efficiencies but along with efficiencies you know there are also certain gaps or loopholes that come in which are really important from the customer point of view i would not be exaggerating if i mentioned that insurance is the most complex of financial services what you are buying when you go to buy an insurance policy is basically a promise a promise that should a particular contingency arise or certain contingency arise certain contingencies arise in the future you will be paid a claim that you make now the claim may be in the form of a benefit it could be in the form of a compensation it could be in the form of a reimbursement but end of the day you are buying something which is intangible and that makes the insurance service all the more complex so uh, you know let's have a quick look at the insurance canvas that is today it's really important to understand the entire uh, gamut of uh, the insurance sector so we're looking at uh, risk carriers that means insurance companies so when we buy a policy we are transferring our risk to the insurance company so we have uh, over 57 companies today uh, we also have reinsurance branches reinsurance is a concept where just like you and i go and buy insurance from an insurance company insurance companies themselves go to reinsurers to protect their balance sheets so the entire concept of insurance revolves around the spread of risk so the larger the numbers you know the better it is uh, for the sector and the lower the prices and we are also looking at several intermediaries or involved agents and intermediaries or involved in the distribution uh, part of insurance so the network or the canvas is pretty complex and the number of policies for instance that have been issued uh, you know is 57 crore and when i talk of the insurance sector and i talk of the size of the sector 75% uh, of the premium volume comes from the life insurance sector rest of it comes from health and general insurance apart from your traditional agents i'm sure all of you uh, would have heard of uh, you know i'm talking especially addressing the uh, young children in the school about insurance agents you know who actually try probably are in touch with your parents to sell a policy or you know service the policies so over the years uh, many new distribution channels have come up so we have insurance brokers, we have insurance uh, marketing firms, we have corporate agents or entities who uh, run agencies, but they're not individuals. So with more and more touch points coming into the picture and with the online facility also available, the entire thing becomes very complex for a common man to really understand as to how he or she should go about buying an insurance policy. Even when you look at agents or you look at brokers, you know, you may not be interacting directly with them. You will be inter interacting through technology, uh, uh, at least in the beginning. So uh, I'm now going to basically, having set a context, I, I'm going to talk about three things today. One is, let us understand what the insurance value chain is. I will try to keep it as simple as possible, keeping the, uh, you know, uh, variety of audience in view. And then what is the role of the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India as a regulator? How does a regulator keep pace with technology? And last but not the least, I'd like to touch upon the customer's perspective. That is really important, especially in the context of a complex uh, you know, financial service that I'm talking about. So let's look at what is the life cycle of an insurance uh, policy. I'm going to keep it uh, as simple as possible in a layman's language. So let's say I want to now look at whether I need insurance protection for myself. So I first want to understand what are my needs? What kind of insurance do I need? And for that, I also need to know what kind of insurance products are available in the market. So the gamut of insurance is huge. You have life insurance, you have health insurance, and in general insurance, you have insurance of property, insurance of liability. To give you simple examples, if I want to insure my house, I'm insuring it's a property insurance. If all of us know that vehicles cannot be plied on the road without a mandatory motor third party insurance. So if I'm taking a motor third party insurance, it is a liability insurance. So first I need to understand that I have to take a motor third party insurance if I'm owning a vehicle because it is mandatory as per law. Next, I know that I want to protect my family in the event of any unfortunate event of my death or my disability. 
So I would like to take a life insurance policy. I know that health expenses are huge today. I would like to take a health insurance policy. So in today's digital world, you know that there is basically information available all over. So I need to first understand what kind of information I should be looking for and where I should be looking for. So I would like to now, let's say, take a life insurance policy. I first need to know what are the products that are available. So I start looking for information. See, there are two methods. One is I follow the traditional method. I contact my agent. I can always do that. And in a country like ours, that has to remain. But you have to also bring in more and more online because the kind of development that has taken place in our country, I mean, I think it is unparalleled. And secondly, it brings in greater transparency, as I said, and also speed. So, especially the late new age generation would like everything at the click of a button. So, I need to understand what is out there in that whole net that is available. What are the companies that are offering these products? What kind of products are available? So, when so much of information is there, I want to see if I can compare not just the price of products, but also design of the products. So that is where the concept of web aggregators is coming. So over the uh, over uh, a few years ago, IRDA introduced web aggregators. They are licensed uh, entities, which actually give you comparison on uh, you know on a website of different products available. So just this look at the use of technology. Because if I were to contact my traditional agent, he might not be knowledgeable about all. Moreover, an agent represents just one company, so he will not be in a position to give you a comparison of the products offered by all the companies. This is a, a great boon to us because of technology. Secondly, let's say I have, we call this as a proposal stage. So I have decided to take a policy. I fill up the proposal form. I can fill it up online today. I don't need my agent to come and give me a proposal form and fill it up physically. So I fill it up online. I submit it online. And once the insurer receives it, the insurer is also able to, you know, assess the risk definitely through use of technology. For example, if I have uh, you know, communicated that I'm hypertensive and I'm, di uh, I'm diabetic, then they have enough data relating to morbidity and mortality, all of which you know, they have uh, basically used IT tools like data mining, use of big data and everything. And they know that, yes, if these are the risk factors, this is uh, probably what I should be pricing my product. So they uh, insurers are able to use technology to assess a risk better. And then they decide to issue a, me a policy and they can do it online today. I mean, I can buy a policy online. So I get a policy through email or, uh, you know, uh, they, I will come a little later to that. We also have insurance repositories. So having bought a policy, let me come to the next. I'm, I'm just going stage by stage through the product life cycle. I need certain servicing. I have changed, uh, let's say there is a, a certain health condition which I want to reveal because remember insurance is based on utmost good faith. When I pre fill up the proposal form, I am supposed to be very honest about whatever questions I'm answering. If there is a question whether I, I am hypertensive, if I am, I have to say yes, because if I say no, then uh, you know it's incorrect and my claim is going to be prejudiced. So, when I, when I uh, suppose I need a change and I want to declare something to the insurance company, I can again, you know, do it online. So I, uh, I can access my particular account, declare these details. The insurance company will basically update, uh, you know, the policy. So everything is happening online. I don't have to meet with my agent for, uh, you know, uh, any intermediary to do this. And let's say there's an unfortunate event and a claim arises under the policy. I'll now slightly shift. I started with a life example, but to give you a better idea of uh, you know, use of technology in claims, I will shift to general insurance. So in general insurance, if I've insured my house, you know, if I've taken, uh, it's a property insurance, it probably would need a surveyor. You know, surveyors are licensed individuals or entities. So when there's a physical loss to property, the insurance company will appoint a surveyor to come and assess the loss and see the extent of damages. So nothing better than technology for that today. In fact, during the COVID, a lot of, uh, you know, a small uh, losses were surveyed. So basically, uh, either the surveyor 
you know, so what happens is it's a very small loss. The customer himself or herself can take a video of that and upload it, uh, you know, on the insurance insurer's website. And a surveyor who's an expert will have a look at that. Or the surveyor also, in fact, you know, in uh, jurisdictions abroad, and that is happening now in crop insurance in some parts of the country, drones are used to assess uh, losses, physical losses. So here is a great example of how, you know, technology can be used, uh, you know, for survey. And uh, last but not the least, if I'm a dissatisfied customer and I want to complain to the insurance, uh, you know, uh, company, then I can lodge a complaint online. So uh, all insurance companies have to have online facilities for capture of complaint and also disposal. So I just wanted to give you a brief idea of how technology can play a role. And I have just touched, uh, you know, I've just skimmed through it because it's a very, very detailed uh, subject. But end of the day, there is a role for technology in every stage of insurance. And what kind of technology is involved? Several, like, uh, you know, use of digital platforms, and use of Internet of Things. I'd like to give you an example there. When you come to policy design, for example, how technology can be used. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if all of you have heard of the concept of telematics. So telematics basically uses a device, you know, which is fixed to the car and uh, the driving habits and, uh, you know, whether the car is being driven, what kind of terrain it is being driven, is it being driven fast, is it being driven slow, etc., can be captured through the device. So these help the insurance company have a better idea of the risk they are getting into and they know how to price it. And not only that, with better monitoring, you know, the risk of having a loss is also reduced. So nowadays you have Internet of Things like telematics for cars or you have wearables, you know, so both for life insurance and health insurance. I'm sure many of us must be wearing that where we are trying to see whether we have completed 10,000 steps or I think today the norm is 7,000 or whatever. So Wearables and you also have, you know, patches which will uh, indicate your sugar level. So uh, with the use of wearables, it is easier for insurers to uh, basically assess risk. And it's also good for the customer because if the customer is keeping, uh, you know, those things in check, then he or she will get a better price because if the uh, and or, or the, you know, the um, likelihood of hospitalization or any medical treatment is certainly reduced. Having said that, these are all the numerous possibilities that are there uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, digitalization in insurance. I would like to give you the regulatory perspective. So it's important in, that the regulator keeps pace with what is happening. And why would the regulator have to do that? Because end of the day, the interests of the policyholders or the customers has to be borne in mind. So uh, the IRDI has taken a lot of initiatives one thing which I alluded to earlier was the insurance repository. So, uh, you know, IRDI approves uh, repo repositories and um, uh, policyholders or customers can actually store their policy. So you need to open an account. You can either approach your insurer directly or you can ask, uh, you know, your uh, agent or you can even approach through the repositories. So open an account, store your policies there, also get your servicing done in terms of policy servicing to, uh, you know, whatever uh, extent it is possible. For example, obviously through a repository, a claim servicing is not possible, but policy servicing is possible if you need changes to your policy, etc. So this is, I think, an aspect which I really wanted to publicize because uh, today we must make use of this. It is something similar to your DigiLocker, but a little more than that because you also get certain servicing advantages. Now, uh, talking of e-commerce, that has become the norm of the day, and especially in the uh, pandemic scenario, uh, we we all, uh, you know, how important technology and, uh, you know, the whole cyber world became to us. So, uh, IRDAI also ramped up and uh, facilitated insurance companies to go more digital and uh, uh, permitted certain things like, uh, you know, uh, actually uh, using digital signatures for policies, etc. Otherwise, uh, in, in our framework, it's important to basically give a written proposal. But uh, uh, all of that, all of those steps were taken by IDAI because uh, it was important that we ensure that people get protection. One thing is about insurance companies being able to carry on their business. But why? Because giving insurance protection, especially health insurance and life insurance, became all the more important during the pandemic. That's when e-commerce really came into use and, uh, uh, you know, a lot of policyholders benefited. Why do we keep an oversight about on e-commerce? Again, in the interest of policyholders, 
So we make sure that there is data integrity, there is privacy and the confidentiality issues are all uh, you know taken care of. And uh, of course, uh, if you want to pay your premium, uh, you can use any payment mechanism which the RBI basically permits. Another important initiative is the regulatory sandbox. Uh, the other day, if you listen to, uh, heard the banking uh, thing, I did hear, uh, you know, Madam and the CGM there talk about the regulatory sandbox initiative in banking. Similar to that, we have uh, uh, um, uh, IRDA has taken the regulatory sandbox initiative and we already have had two cohorts uh, wherein uh, more than, you know, 100 applications have been examined and, and a lot of them have been approved. They have to do, as I mentioned, with policy design. For example, we did get applications relating to use of telematics in motor. Currently, something which is not there in our jurisdiction. But insurance companies have carried out experiments and found that it is really useful for the customer, and therefore we want to bring it finally into the framework. So uh, IRDI has promoted the Insurance Information Bureau of India, which uh, fundamentally collects data from all the insurance companies. And uh, this data is also uh, now I'm coming to the aspect of frauds. Now, frauds is something, uh, you know, uh, the insurance industry is quite vulnerable to. And uh, this kind of capture of data and mining of data and analysis uh, and fraud analytics would really give pointers to the industry as to where they need to be careful. Because end of the day, uh, we don't want any outgo of, uh, you know, the, uh, the money towards fraudulent claims because it actually would then reflect as higher prices for the individuals. Uh, now I will, uh, uh, we have about eight minutes and let me quickly move to the customer perspective because I, I want to make tell you that yes, digitalization is important. It is important to automate because it gives us efficiencies, it gives us speed. But while we do that, we do know that we are opening ourselves or uh, you know exposing ourselves to new issues or new concerns it is equally or more important to handle that as we go along. So uh, again, I'm going to uh, you know go through the uh, life cycle product and tell at each stage what is to be done. So if I have decided at the proposal stage, that is where I decide that I want to buy a policy, I must look for credibility of the sellers. I mean, I'm just not talking of uh, you know uh, uh, approaching a licensed agent or anything. I'm talking about what I'm looking at on the net. So am I, am I sure that this is a credible website? Once I've ascertained that, I must give information which is basically um, necessary and not more, and not less. And I, I need to be honest. Secondly, when it comes to know your customer information or I must make sure of, to prove my identity or whatever, I must make sure I give only information that is required. I, it might uh, seem cliche, but I must mention that whatever precautions we need to take, whenever do we, we are doing any transaction on the net, we need to take over here too. Having strong passwords, avoiding websites which are not starting with HTTPS, and you know we need to be very aware or be beware of suspicious and spurious identities. In fact, uh, what is happening today is leave alone the net or leave alone, you know, going through a web app or mobile app and getting uh, cheated. There are people who actually call up on your number. They are spurious callers. Call you and they say somehow they have some uh, information from some stolen database and they come to you and say that, you know, I, I know you hold a policy, blah, blah, blah. And uh, if you deposit two lakhs or three lakhs with me, you are actually going to get back much more than what you invested. So this is an initial fee that you have to pay and things like that. I have come across instances of highly educated people also getting taken in by such calls. And it's very important for us to guard ourselves against that. And uh, so when, I, when it comes to, you know, claims processing again, as I said, everything can be done digital for smaller claims in particular. So you can actually, uh, you know, there are instances where you can upload your documents and get the claim processed online. But while you're doing that, please ensure that you have provided only details which are necessary. Sometimes, you know, we might become lazy and without culling out information, we just, okay, you know, tell someone, just upload all these documents. So let's not do that. We have to be very clear what is the information called for, what is that we are actually giving. And then please do protect yourselves against phishing and suspicious communications. For example, if I have applied for something and I know I have given my name, instead of saying, dear Yagna Priya, so and so, 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 if they just say, oh, dear, uh, you know, customer or anything generic, 
you must be uh, you're a bit suspicious. You must try and understand that it might be just coming from some suspicious source. So uh, while I've been talking about rights as a customer, when it comes to you know uh, cyber transactions, we must all we also have certain duties. I must bear in mind that I must engage in appropriate behavior when I am dealing with online things. Uh, so um, I should not uh, resort to cyberbully or you know sometimes spamming of emails. So those kind of things we also have to uh, behave responsibly when we do that. So there are n number of possibilities when it comes to digitalization and the insurance sector. Yes. It is linked to growth of the insurance sector because if I talk of a more developed insurance sector, I'm actually referring to a more developed society and a better protected economy. So for me, the protection gap comes down if I'm talking of growth of the insurance sector. And while we grow, we need to grow sensibly. We need to grow carefully. We need to adopt technology that is relevant and we need to ensure that you know there are no concerns relating to privacy confidentiality and uh, things like that so uh, i'm going to leave four minutes for questions uh, if there is anything end of the day i i believe it digitalization in the insurance sector is very useful for citizens and but please remember it is a means to an end and it is not an end in itself so uh, thank you very much and uh, over to you mr dwivedi regarding questions Thank you, madam. Thank you so much. Uh, before we formally close, a uh, couple of questions are there. I can see on the uh, chat box. Uh, uh, Mrs. Supriya Rathi, she would like to know if someone had taken term insurance, how he can sign up Marriage Women Property Act benefit? Okay, so I am not from the life insurance space and I cannot answer the specific question, but I will note it down. And okay. I will get back to you. I, I basically handle the non-life uh, segment and, uh, you know, uh, I'm just uh, here talking about how digitization can help in a generic way. But uh, <clears throat> I have noted your question and otherwise I would suggest you go to the IRDA website and, you know, send an email uh, so that you can get a response. Yeah, sure, madam. We also advise them that we will also compile all the questions which cannot be answered. Everything cannot be answered in this platform. We'll compile and get to the feedback from uh, IRDI and uh, give them the reply. That also we will do. So that uh, no worry. And the second thing uh, she would like to know, could we provide some contact details of depository service providers where it is available? Probably Certainly. Should. They are available on the IRDI website, but uh, if you send a mail, we can respond to that as well. Okay. Uh, then Dr. Dipanshu Agarwal, while he has appreciated, uh, it's a very nice session and he uh, is appreciating that, he is, there's a very fundamental question, I don't know, why insurance sector in India is divided into two parts, life and non-life? Well, it's not just in India, it is, uh, you know, uh, so everywhere in the world. Uh, so some, anything you look at, you know, it will have its own peculiarities. So when you deal with the life insurance, there are certain principles which are slightly different from ins uh, general insurance. I'll give you a basic uh, quick example. So life cannot be valued. If I want to insure my life, let's say for one crore, I mean, it's just a rough estimate if the insurance company based on my income permits me that some, uh, some assure. <clears throat> but I can't really put a value to my life. Whereas it is different. If you're looking at this mobile phone that I have, it has a value. I know how much I bought it for. So I cannot insure it for more. Let's say I bought it for 50,000. I cannot insure it for uh, uh, 1 lakh. So this is called the principle of indemnity, which applies for general insurance, but doesn't for life. <clears throat> so based on these basic principles, there is a bifurcation. Okay. Thank you. Well, I, we can take the last, I think, madam, if uh, time permits, I, I think we are just a few seconds left. Uh, from uh, Vikas Sharma. He would like to know, is in near future, physical services trend will shrink due to digital development? So I would like to put it the other way in a positive way. I would like to say online services will increase. And given the kind of uh, country, uh, you know, ours is, uh, and the protection gap that I've been talking about, we want both traditional, that is physical, and online to increase until we reach the target where everybody is well protected. So I don't want to see a reduction in physical. I want to see an increase in both. Okay, nicely put, madam. I think we will close formally uh, that. Any other queries which is coming, we will try and get the clarification from you and uh, answer the participants. Um, uh, uh, there is one from 
Okay, Asmita, if you can just take that. Yes. Whether the insurance company have uh, made, met with any loss at this time of pandemic? That I don't think this is it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I can mention uh, definitely the outgoes and in health insurance have increased, uh, you know, because of the COVID related claims that have been paid. Uh, yeah, so that's what insurance is all about. Uh, you know, you don't know when, what will happen. And when it happens, uh, the, they will have to pay. Thank you so much, madam. Now, I think I will request Viraj uh, to propose a formal vote of thanks. Viraj, are you there? Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, it's a great honor to offer a vote of thanks on this special occasion. It was indeed a very interesting session. Uh, we all have received great insights about insurance sector in India, also about the various product that you're offering and the various initiatives like uh, the sandbox initiative that is taken for betterment of the uh, users, users uh, interface. And uh, on behalf of my entire team, I extend sincere thanks to respected Ibna Priya Bharat ma'am Chief General Manager, Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India and the Director NCFE, who despite her busy schedule, kindly consented to grace the occasion and uh, became a part of this event. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we also convey a special thanks to the resource persons, financial literacy counselors, financial education trainers, college principals, professors, students, and uh, the insurance uh, companies representatives who have attended the sessions and uh, everyone who have participated to various digital mode. Further, we would like to say that uh, NCFE is also conducting national level financial literacy quiz for college students. So uh, here I would like uh, all our college students uh, to uh, participate and uh, claim the various prizes that we are offering. And it is, uh, it is uh, there till 18th of Feb. Uh, also, uh, we are happy to say that uh, Digital uh, Financial Services Day uh, is also observed tomorrow in Financial Literacy Week. And for more details, you can log in to ncfe.org.in. You can also follow our YouTube channel and various social media handles like LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. And uh, once again, I would uh, like to thank all our participants. It was a great pleasure to be our host and uh, have a great day ahead. Thank you all. Thank you, madam. Thank you once again. Yeah, thank you very much to everybody, especially the little school children. Thank you.